Hey everyone, um, just wanted to uh, update everybody. Uh, so I, I got the headers, I got the rear header tacked together on the car. Um, I'm not at the shop to uh, to show that at the moment, but I'll, I'll post another video about the header uh, design and production and, and and what kind of materials I use and all that kind of stuff. But um, I turned my focus back to the intercooler. <clears throat> now that I got the engine. Uh, mounted in the car, um, I discovered that uh, even without an intercooler, my intake's a little too tall for the engine lid to shut, and and I and I knew that, uh, I anticipated that. My plan was to build a uh, uh, like a Phoenix Power style engine lid, either build it or buy it, or take a Phoenix Power and modify it, or you know take a stock one and bust out some fiberglass, you know, and, and make it look like a Phoenix Power but have the height I need to clear the intake manifold. Um, I don't want to do like the hot rod thing and just leave the intake sticking through the hood and all that. It, I don't think that looks that great. I don't want no one to know that this beast is under the under the engine lid until, until I open the throttle. So, um, I went back to the drawing board a little bit on the intercooler and um, thinking about the, the core size and everything uh, I partnered with a, uh, a company uh, that produces liquid to air intercooler cores um, they were very very helpful uh, I was able to talk to their front uh, front office person who is the most knowledgeable front office person I, I have ever you know heard i mean uh she answered the phone she had uh, 99 percent of the knowledge and expertise and data right at her fingertips and she knew what she was talking about which was another uh, another huge plus to dealing with this company um, when she had a question that you know she actually couldn't answer um, because the data wasn't necessarily in her spreadsheet or she it was a question that hadn't come up she got me right on the phone with her uh lead engineer i mean you, you can't ask for better customer service and responsiveness than that um it, it is a phenomenal experience so I, I discovered there was some misconceptions uh, mainly because of probably my background in, in heating and air conditioning um I, I had a misconception that running the liquid through the intercooler from from this side to this side going through here initially my logic said that okay the longer the water comes across this core the more heat it's going to absorb so the more cooling it's going to do I was I was totally corrected and when I thought about it the other way, what was wrong with me? I, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, I guess we all have these these uh, moments or whatever that we, we discover what we thought was reality is totally not. So what I was explained is uh, water, the water flow, you want across the shortest dimension because your water starts out cold it's coming from you know your heat exchanger or in, in my case it's being pumped directly from my tank which has a a chiller in it and um and all that so so i'm pumping cool water up to this core um they if, if i pump it in this way even at 30 gallons per minute it's going to get about two-thirds to half to two-thirds of the way across the core. And it's going to absorb as, as much heat as it can. You're going to find an equilibrium between the water temperature and the air temperature. And no more cooling can happen. Um, I've seen some intercoolers similar to this one that are designed that way. And I've seen people complaining about the performance of it. And I thought it was mainly due to the machined end tanks and, you know, not proper distribution of the water down every single channel in a low pressure or no pressure system. 
But what I discovered was this is probably the reason. Um, and the engineer talked it through with me. And he says, no, 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 you want the water to flow in this direction. Because we have approximately seven inches in this direction. And at 30 gallons per minute, that water is going to absorb as much heat um, as it can. It, it may have maybe 5 to 10% uh, capacity left in the water uh, to absorb heat. But you, you get kind of a... Um, it's a point of diminishing returns. Um, for, for this size and, you know, general core mass, essentially six to eight inches is is ideal. Anything over eight inches is really just a, a point of diminishing returns. So you start where initially on like a six inch core, one inch will say absorb 50 degrees. Well, now when you go past eight inches and let's say you have a 10 or 12 inch core, each inch after that is now only going to absorb uh, 10 or 15 degrees. So it's kind of a point of diminishing returns. And there's no point to, uh, you know, purchasing a larger core like that. Because um, the, the the extra capacity you get is, is highly diminished for the for the dollar amount. And it doesn't it's not worth. Um, it's not worth redesigning. Or, or adapting the design to fit something that's going to get not very good returns. So we've discovered through the through the process talking to the engineer and, and talking through this um, that going from this here to here um, with our water flow is the better way to do it. Um, and I've had to go back and and, and redesign my uh, my top and bottom plates here. I've had to redesign it to accommodate the new uh, dimension, you know, the new size core, it's going to be a, a lot larger core. Um, as far as in this dimension, and, and a little bit larger in this dimension than I originally um, planned on. And that's only because uh, in the core thickness, they only have certain size cores available. Um, but the core that I chose is approximately 15 to 1600 horsepower rated core and that they say is a conservative number and when comparing it to a to a much smaller Garrett core uh, the much smaller Garrett cores say that they're thousand horsepower rated um, I mean we're talking about 45 percent smaller core bought from Garrett they say is thousand horsepower rated so this core being 40% larger is only rated for, um, you know, 13 or so uh, to 15. Um, seems appropriate. So this is the core. That's the core I'm going to go with. Um, I did order it today. It was, the order was placed today. And um, I should be, I mean, it's going to ship today. So in the next week or so, I should be receiving probably three days or so, uh, Tuesday or next Tuesday or Wednesday. I should be receiving uh, the water air core. Um, I, I got to find a new company to machine the plates. I had somebody that was going to machine them, um, a company called Outlaw Racing. Totally let me down. Totally let me down. And, and not just on this. Um, I had two other projects that I, I had to have machined related to this engine. You know, I had the lower intake plenum I need to have machined out for the ports. They had it for six months. Uh, they couldn't do it. I mean, they could do it. They just didn't do it. Uh, excuse after excuse, putting everybody else's projects in front of mine. Um, even though mine came in six months ago, uh, I got kind of fed up. And finally, I got somebody's attention over there. And um, they, uh, they, they thought they were addressing it by tripling the price. They basically just tripled the price that, I, that they quoted me. Um, so out of, out of uh, you know, principle of the matter, I'm done with that. So I went and picked up my stuff, and I'm going to find another place to do it. Anyways, just going to give you guys an update on this. Thanks.